Sometimes in Rust, we want to be able to have a data structure that stores many different types, uh, but in just, well, one data structure. So let's, um, let's give ourselves like a quick example here. So let's say we want um, uh, something like a, uh, a struct that is gonna hold maybe, um, maybe like names or favorite things. But we don't know like what type this is gonna be. Maybe the struct stores many different types inside of here for some reason, I don't know. Um, maybe it's like our favorite things. And our, uh, like the actual thing is gonna be something. Maybe it's a number sometimes. Maybe it's just like a another struct that we've like come up with ourselves. We don't know what that is. And like, there's no way for me to just write down something like that. Wouldn't it be nice if like, just every once in a while we can go back and pretend that we're JavaScript and just say, just be a thing. Just, just let me store you in here. Um, well, Rust kind of sort of allows us to do that. There's something called the any trait. Now, inside of structs, we can store things using dynamic dispatch, which is going to be more of a runtime check uh, to see whether or not, hey, does this is this thing the right type that we want to have? Now, I can't just say, hey, it's going to be something that implements this any type. That's unfortunately not something we can do. But we can use the dyne keyword um, to do that. So dyne any. But I can't actually just put the dyne keyword like this here. Uh, we're going to have to box it up. So we're going to just put a box. And then inside of that, dyne any. Um, oh, we do have to pull it in because it's not part, it's not just like, you know, part of the prelude that everybody has, but it's part of the standard library. So we can just do standard any any and have access to it here. So if I want to, I can now create uh, several different favorite things, each with different types here. So let's do um, let's see, let maybe like a uh, U32s or like a favorite thing. So a U32s uh, equals um, favorite things thing is going to be maybe like a 10. U32. Um, let's do another one with like a uh, floats. So let floats equals favorite things. And this is a thing of like maybe 50.0 F32. And these all Um, well, we do have one one issue here, which is it wants these to be any plus static. So we can we can further restrict this. Oh, uh, we need to store this inside of a box. So box new. Put you in there like that. And now things are working. So now this is how we can store completely different things together. Um, field is never read. Yeah, well, well, we'll get to that in a little bit. So this is great. It allows us to store completely separate types together into one well you know, thing here. But, you know, how do I get everything back out? Because that's kind of important, right? We like we kind of lost what it is. It's, well, it's, it's anything really. So to get it back out, we need to do something called downcasting. So a downcast is basically where we can say, hey, just whatever this is, give it back to me. So let's say I can do, let's impull off of our favorite things. Uh, we're gonna do a pub function. Maybe we'll like a get for this. So get um, 
do a self. We're just going to get a reference to this. And well, again, like what? How do I know what like type to get this from? We almost need to use generics for this. So what if I do this? Get T. Now we need to make sure that T implements both of these things here together. So T implements an any plus static. And then we're going to turn, we're going to take in self, and we're going to return this T, whatever that is. So to extract something out so we can actually see it and, and have it be like a strong type again for, you know, type system usage, uh, we can do self.thing.downcast, and our two choices are downcast mute and downcast ref here. So um, a downcast ref will just give us a reference to the thing. Now it'll be an option because if we attempt to downcast it to something that it's not, so let's say I try to downcast it to a U64 when I really stored a U32, then I'm gonna get a none because, well, it tried to downcast, it's not actually that type, and so, you know, we're, we're done. Uh, so we're gonna do a downcast ref. Now, I should probably have this be an option T here. Um, okay, so we're gonna do self.thing, downcast ref. I have to tell it what type it is. Uh, now it should know because we're calling this with a type here. So if I just save this, um, you need, oh, you're gonna be a reference. So let's go ahead and update you, you're a reference. And we're good to go. Now it just is yelling at me because I'm not actually using this. So let's go ahead and use it from this side here. So let our extracted U32, it's gonna be equal to a U32s dot get. Um, now I do have to give it a type here. So I'm gonna use a, a turbo fist syntax to say you're a U32. And we can expect that this is correct. So I should be able to safely unwrap this. And let's just do an assert equal that our extracted U32 is equal to a 10. If I run this, no implementation for, oh, well, remember we got a reference to a U32 here. So I need to dereference that and then this should work. And there we go. So it, it successfully works. We're able to downcast it into its discrete type and then we're able to do comparisons and everything else. Until then, if I try to do anything with the, uh, the U32 um, that has been stored here in the any, it's kind of useless to us. It's just sitting there as an any, which there's not much we can do with it. But it can be extremely helpful if I want to have, let's say, a vector of a lot of different types. Um, I can have it just be in a box with dine any. And now I just have a vector of all these different types together. But uh, I don't know what they are necessarily. Now, getting them out, that's uh, we kind of have to know what they are. That uh, that is super, super helpful. But any is one of those things where I don't really pull it out very often. But when I do need it, it's extremely helpful. So anyways, hopefully this is helpful for you. We're going to be using this quite extensively in our in the project at the end of the project. So I, um, uh, I look forward to uh, using it there. I'll see you in the next video.